Good morning and welcome to the Morning Outlook Report. I'm James Preston reporting live from Kalkine TV studios in Sydney. This morning the market has opened lower, dropping by 0.43% early into the morning session. Yesterday the Australian share market saw positive territory with real estate, miners and energy stocks all doing well. At the closing bell, the S&P ASX 200 was 0.4% or 26 points higher at 7,379. Across the sectors, 10 of 11 closed in the green. Real Estate Investment Trust was the best performer, up by 1.8%, followed by Energy and Materials. Meanwhile, financials fell 0.3% as the only sector in the red. The best performing stock on the S&P ASX 200 yesterday was NetWealth Group, which closed 6.2% higher at $16.95. The worst performing stock was GUD Holdings, closing 4% lower at $11.16. Moving on to business news from this morning, Rio Tinto is set to write off Mongolia's outstanding $2.3 billion debt for its share in the Oyu Tolgoi mine with views to expand the copper gold project. When completed, the mine will become the world's third largest copper mine. The mine has been plagued by setbacks, disputes and delays. Rio's Chief Executive Officer, Jacob Stossholm, proposed improved terms for a 2015 financing agreement. Mongolian Prime Minister Oyen Erden Luvsurmani Srai confirmed his office had received a letter from Rio Tinto agreeing to cancel the debt. Aerial imagery and location intelligence company Nearmap expects the annualised contract value of its North America portfolio for the first time to surpass the ACV of its Australia and New Zealand portfolio expects this milestone to happen by the end of December 2021. Nearmap also expects its North American business to represent the majority of the group ACV portfolio in the future as growth in that market continues to accelerate. At the same time, the Australian and New Zealand business does continue to perform well. Air New Zealand has entered into a reworked financial support package with their government, which increases the available overall support to $2 billion from $1.5 billion. To date, the airline has drawn $505 million of the existing Crown loan. It's estimated that the drawings could be around $900 million by late February or March 2022. The government has recently outlined a plan of phased reopening of borders from early 2022, opening a pathway for international travel to New Zealand. However, the airline noted that the future impacts of COVID remain uncertain and circumstances continue to change around the world. And Treasury Wine Estates has today completed the acquisition of Frank Family Vineyards in the United States. And we first reported this purchase on the 18th of November. And now it's time for a very short break, but stay tuned for more news set to affect your trading day. Hi there, James Preston for Calkine TV. Are you into gaming and virtual reality? Does AI and the endless possibilities it entails capture your interest? Or are you constantly trawling through the web to try and discover the latest updates and innovations in the tech space? Well, let us do the work for you. From the latest product launches to shocking affairs on the World Wide Web, exclusive interviews and information about the top companies like Apple and Google to brand new tech startups vying for your attention. Kalkine's Tech Beat has the latest in what matters in the world of technology. Join me every single Thursday on The Tech Beat, exclusive to Kalkine TV. Welcome back to the Morning Outlook. Great to have your company. Let's now take a quick look at the performance of overseas markets before we assess the Aussie dollar. U.S. markets struggled overnight with the Dow Jones dropping by 0.89%. The S&P 500 fell by 0.91% and the Nasdaq endured a particularly poor day, declining by a whopping 1.39%. The pullback on Wall Street may partly have reflected profit-taking as traders cashed in on some of the strength seen in the markets last week. European markets also saw a loss. The FTSE 100 dropped by 0.83%. The stocks 600 also dropped by 0.43%, while the German DAX traded mostly flat to finish at 0.01% lower. It was a slightly different story for Asian markets though. Japan's Nikkei rose by 0.71% alongside the Shanghai Composite, which also rose by 0.4%, whilst Hong Kong's Hang Shen dipped slightly by 0.17%. 
As for the Aussie dollar, it saw an improvement, trading at 71.34 US cents to increase by 0.04%. Oil prices also fell amid rising Omicron concerns. Brent futures settled down by 1.01% to trade at 74 US dollars and 39 cents a barrel. And WTI crude settled down by 0.53% to trade at 71 US dollars and 29 cents a barrel. In terms of the world's favourite yellow metal, gold prices inched higher. The gold futures gained 0.2% to trade at 1,787 US dollars and 90 cents. And lastly, the crypto space appears to have officially entered a bear market. Thousands of altcoins have seen enormous value drops. The fifth ranked coin Solana has experienced a 9.52% drop in the past 24 hours. The second largest currency Ethereum dropped more than 8% to trade below 4,000 US. And Bitcoin has lost 6.31% in the past 24 hours to trade just above 47,000 US dollars at the time of writing. All right, that's all for Tuesday's edition of the Morning Outlook. Have a great day trading. And make sure to keep it locked on Calkine TV for the latest market insights and business news. I'm James Preston reporting for Calkine.